Today we're going to be cooking a brisket that I got from uh, West Meats in Christchurch. I wanted to do a brisket on the um, Bronco Pro and it has a reputation for being set and forget. Today I'm going to be preparing a brisket. This is going to be my wife's lovely birthday dinner and she is delighted, believe me. She is not. So the first thing we need to do is get this out of the packet and pat it dry. So we just need to trim off some of this that we're not going to use. So just got to pull this bit of silver skin off. The easiest way to do that, get a tissue, grip it with the tissue and just pull it. So we just want to trim the, the fat cap down a bit because this will never render. There's a big hard lump right along that side there. Unfortunately, they seem to have knocked quite a lot <laughs> of the point off when they've butchered it, but never mind. A little tip that the guys at Meat Church do is just cut here so you know which direction to slice in because we've got the grain running this way. So you've got 90 degrees, so you want to cut 90 degrees to the grain when it's finished. There we go, one trim brisket. That's about as good as I can get that one, I think. And I think that'll be magnificent. And we've also got this bowl of trimmings here, which will make some great smash burgers later. So today again, using the original heat beads. Reasonably full basket today, because we're going for quite a long burn. So the theory is that that will burn across the basket. That now, we'll leave the lid open to let that catch. Eyes lit and while that's getting going, it's time to get the brisket in. Big shout out to the people at Plank, of the Plank, uh, www.theplank.nz, who made this fabulous chopping board for us. Uh, Taranaki based company, a uh, reasonably new company, so give them some love. Link in the description. So it's time to get some rub onto our lovely brisket. Start off on the back. Today we're using a bit of rum and cube bull dust. So not much of a coating of this to start because I don't want to make it too spicy. Uh, my wife's not a big fan of the spice and it is actually her birthday today. So we'll let that soak in for a minute. Also going to give it a light coat of the Miracle Rub. This is one of our favourite rubs, or my favourite rub I should say. It just adds a little something. Again, because it's been in the fridge, this is nice and dry now. As the Master Chud says, don't forget the sides. <coughs> a little sprinkle of the Miracle. And we'll leave that to soak in a bit. And cover it up very loosely with a tea towel. One thing I had almost forgotten was we're going to need some chunks of wood. So this is lovely apple wood. Not traditionally used when doing beef, but as I said before, my wife's not a big fan of the smoky flavour. So I don't want to over smoke it. So as the fire burns, obviously the first one will catch and then as the fire spreads across the bucket, um, we'll continue to get the smoke rising. Might just give the fire starter a hand. So that's helped a little bit down in that corner. So that's it. The pit's up now just over 200. 
our brisket is sweating beautifully. And I'm going to put it with the point end nearest where the flames are. Fat side up. How's that looking? Fantastic. So now just a matter of putting a couple of probes in and the point. So that goes in channel two. I am going to put one in the flat end or the lean as the Americans call it. And that's going to go in channel number three. So we can see there, channel one, that's the pit temperature. Obviously it's reading a bit low because the lid's open. Points at 38, that's at 40. And then we've got three spare channels, which we're not using today. I will actually just tidy these cables up. It's the electrician in me. I can't leave them like that. And I can't tell you, I can't explain to you the amount of self-control that was required there to not swear at those cables. I really just cannot convey how much patience that took. I think I've probably used up my quota for the day. See you in a couple of hours. And just at the moment while the pit settles down, I have got the vent here fully open and I've got the chimney vent fully open. So I'll close those vents as the temperature comes up and hopefully we're going to be able to keep it around 275, which we've done on previous cooks. Um, I know roughly where the vents need to go, but I've never cooked with this much fuel. So uh, it will be interesting to see how that goes. The pit is currently rocking at 273, but the flat end seems to be cooking quite quick. So I don't know if I've got the probe in the right place. Uh, it's up to 140 already, which is a bit quicker than we wanted. So I'm going to give it a quick spritz and um, just check that where I've got the probe. Just pull that probe back a bit. The probe was in a little bit far. So spritz in with apple cider vinegar and water. Here we go. Now it's time to wrap. So we've got our lovely uh, Butcher's Direct peach paper here. So we'll just give the little cutter that's on the box a hand with a box cutter because it doesn't seem to want to go. So we're going to get the brisket out now, place it on the paper, wrap it up. Not a breath of wind until you start doing something with paper. Not a breath. As you imagine, the meat is actually quite hot. So, but it's lovely and juicy. So now it needs to go back in. So, we need to wrap it. I know some of you out there will be fans of the foil wrap. I prefer the paper wrap, so that's what I'm doing. So now with it on, we will now cook it fat side down. So back in, fat side down. So today cooking a, a fantastic brisket. It's been in there since 7.30 this morning. So we're now at the, what are we? Half 11, so it's four hours. And it's been cooking and uh, now it's gone in for the wrap. As you can see, another beautiful day here in Christchurch. I wanted to do a brisket on the um, Bronco Pro. It has a reputation of being set and forget. And pretty much it has been. Time is now 4 p.m. And the brisket went on at 7.30 this morning. So it's been on eight and a half hours, cooked four hours unwrapped, four hours wrapped. And now the temperatures are just hitting 202. Uh, 200 so we're almost ready to pull it off and give it a rest hoping for sensational things from the first brisket so here we go a big unwrap so let's go in with the probe oh, oh, oh look at that that is like butter oh man that feels so good Look at the jiggle, what a lovely jiggle. Oh, not bad at all. Right, time to wrap that up again. Let the steam out, let it stop cooking. Rewrap it, put it in the towel and let it rest. I'm really just putting the foil around it to try and keep some of the juice in. I wouldn't normally put foil around it now, but that paper's so wet, I don't want to let all that lovely moisture out. Bring in a trusty barbecue towel, which is only used now for wrapping meat in. That in there. And that can go into our wonderful Access Man bag, like so, and zip it up. So, here we have our magnificent brisket. Unfortunately, earlier on, the paper stuck to the thing, which I've never had before, and pulled a bit of the whatnot off. But it does have a fair bit of jiggle. 
so like that. But it's not bad. Fabulous. We're going to dish this up and we're going to eat it. That's about a slice. Lovely. It does always seem that when I come out here to film, there's just loads of noisy stuff going on. So there you have it, 10 hours in total to cook the brisket. Still loads of noise going on in the background. Hopefully the mic's not picking it up. Um, don't forget, give us a like, hit that thumbs up button. Also hit the bells, the little tingly bell somewhere. If you hit that, you get a notification every time I release a video. If you've got any questions, put them in the comment section down below. There's a big section below the screen, just down here, that says comments. Instead of sending me a comment on WhatsApp or a text, put the comment in there. The algorithm loves it. Okay, hope you've enjoyed it. Until next time, bye-bye now.